Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're looking at some additional issues that I've seen brought up in various comments, replies, and requests, but which I haven't already done videos on. Last time, we talked about whether those in heaven are aware of the suffering in hell, and this time, a topic I saw raised by someone online, how there could be happiness in heaven if all you do is worship God. This person was raising issue with the whole idea of heaven by arguing that certain things about it sound good at first, but ultimately wouldn't make people happy. They said that the descriptions of constant heavenly worship found in some places in the Bible are more like what a dictator would demand than someone who cared about human happiness, and that the idea of God creating mankind solely to spend their time incessantly praising him paints a rather petty picture of him. Now, there are two misunderstandings baked into this objection to heaven. The first is God's motive in expecting worship, and the second is the type of worship being given. The person who raised this question seems to think that because people praise God in heaven, they're somehow being forced to do so as a job of some kind. But this could not be further from the truth. Worship of God is a natural thing to do in heaven because, in the first place, the saints are grateful to God for rescuing them from pain and futility. And in the second place, we have every reason to think that worshiping God will be far more pleasurable in heaven than it is here on earth. Which brings us to the second misunderstanding, the type of worship being given in heaven. Now, it's true that the Bible overtly mentioned music and song and didn't mention other methods of worship. This is probably because music and song had represented joyful worship to the people of Israel ever since they'd been rescued from Egypt and are generally considered pleasant things to do. However, it's a mistake to suppose that because the Bible doesn't mention other kinds of worshipful activities, that therefore no one in heaven does them. That would only be an argument from silence. I covered something similar to this in episode 427, check the link in the video description for the full list of episodes, except there the word being used was prayer rather than worship, but the same rules would apply. Prayer is the lifting up of our minds and hearts to God, to adore him, to thank him for his benefits, to ask his forgiveness, and to beg of him all the graces we need, whether for soul or body. Question 1099 of the Baltimore Catechism. Now, adoration of God is worship that is due only to God. Recognition of his supreme greatness and gratitude to him for the good things he gives us. However, this can be done in many ways, so long as our minds and hearts are focused on God in some way, and recognize his superiority to all other goods. As I said in episode 427, in heaven, people's minds and hearts, and in the new heavens their bodies as well, have already been lifted up to God, which is why they're able to experience true happiness and fulfillment. Like all other good things, these things come from God. However, here on earth we don't always realize it, and can even be distracted from that fact. In heaven, there is no more hiding it. Those who experience the joy and delight of the presence of God, or the beatific vision, are well aware that the true nature of all the good things they've received is God's nature. So, just by paying attention to the good things they're receiving, they are already dwelling on the goodness of God. That means the people of heaven can enjoy any good thing, and it's still technically worship. This is very different from how things are here on earth, and... Aside from immortality, which we'll cover next time, could be argued to be one of the biggest and most impactful differences, in a positive sense, between heaven and earth. There's no more need for self-restraint in heaven, because everything you can enjoy is exactly what it should be. Next, how can the saints endure an infinite tomorrow? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.